Okay, after he dies, Isaac Newton is born. <coughs> Isaac Newton, of course, discovers the law of inertia and the other laws of motion. His law of inertia says um, that everything has to go in a straight line. That's the natural motion of something. The natural motion of something is to go in a straight line. So then he says, planets don't go in a straight line. What's making them go around the sun? If the natural motion of something is to go in a straight line, something's got to be causing them to go around the sun. Aha, uh -huh, gravity. So he's sitting there one day under an apple tree, and an apple falls on his head. I'm not sure if that story is really correct, but you know, it's an apocalyptic story, and uh, basically, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but probably not, you know. So then it, the apple falls on his head, he says, oh, whatever makes this apple fall is probably also the force that makes the planets fall into the sun instead of going in a straight line. So I'm going to call this law of gravity. And then, of course, from there, we've got uh, his law of gravity. So all objects in the universe attract all other objects. The Earth attracts the apple. The apple falls. The sun attracts the Earth. The Earth goes around the sun. The Earth attracts the moon. The moon goes around the Earth. That's what's causing all of this. Without gravity, we wouldn't have planets. We wouldn't have orbits. So this means that the planets revolve around the sun because the gravity of the sun pulls them towards the sun. Of course, there you have it, 1642. The, that's the year that Galileo dies to 1727. That's Isaac Newton. What did he not do? He, invented, he was a co-inventor of calculus. He discovered the laws of uh, gravity, laws of motion. He invented the whole field of optics in our study of prisms and light. Amazing. So, so much, so much, so much. <coughs> so this was the first time that anyone gave an explanation as to why the planets revolved around the sun. If you had asked Kepler, Copernicus, or Galileo, why do they revolve around the sun, they would have said, that's their natural motion. Planets revolve around the sun because they were made to revolve around the sun. Kepler would have said they go elliptically around the sun, but God made them to go elliptically. You know, he, he didn't know there's something gravity. So uh, Newton's theory was really far-reaching. So, of course, comes next person who is a giant in science after Newton is Einstein, <laughs> okay? Albert Einstein says, what is gravity? Newton says, oh, don't go into detail about it. It's just the force between the sun and the earth, and then it's causing the earth to go around. Einstein is like, no, no, I really want an answer. What's gravity? And then Einstein says, oh, gravity is the warping of space-time due to the mass that the sun creates, like in a blanket. So he comes up with his general theory of relativity. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I can go into it, but uh, Einstein goes into his theory of how space is warped due to the sun and due to stars and everything. So, ah, oh, beautiful. Good stuff. So the proof of Newton's law of gravity soon follows. Edmund Halley, of course you know him from the Halley's Comet, used the Newton's law of gravity to predict the return of the comet Halley in the year 1758. So. The comet Halley was a comet that had been coming, but we didn't really know that it's actually the same comet that was always coming. And people saw it, they recorded it, and the, they said, okay, uh, what is this? So he said, this is actually the same object that keeps coming, that keeps coming, that keeps coming. And then he made observations on it, and then he used Newton's laws to say, you know what, this thing is going to return ev every 76 years. So he said it should return in 1758, and I believe he died before seeing its return. But other astronomers knew that it was supposed to return. They looked for it, and sure enough, it returned in 1758. After 1758, it has also been returning every 76 years. So we say the period of this uh, comet is a 76-year period. 
76 years. Every 76 years it returns. So if you keep adding 76, you get 1986. When is the next time it will return? Add 76 more years. 76. What does that bring us? 2062. Okay? So you and my goal is to meet up 2062, okay, in Griffith Observatory, there will be thousands and thousands of people, but we will we'll be like this, of course, okay, and we'll be like, there it is, okay, <coughs> so live healthy, live well, so we can meet each other 2062. Okay, the other interesting uh, historical Note on this is John Couch Adams. John Couch Adams and Urban de Verrier in 1831 predicted that the deviations of the path of the planet Uranus. Now we actually get to the first discovered planet. So this is Uranus. So here's Sun. Here is Uranus. Who discovered Uranus? William Herschel in 1781. How was it discovered? By observation. Okay. He observed it, he observed it. He saw an object in the sky that had a different path in the sky than the stars did. So through the course of months, he said, oh, the location of this planet, of this object is a little different than the, the stars, the, near, uh, the background stars. What is this object? So then eventually became known as the planet uh, Uranus, okay? Then what happened was these guys, Adams and Le Berrier, in 1831, so that gives us about 50 years after this, 1781. They're observing the path of Uranus. And they're saying something doesn't make sense. The path of Uranus cannot simply be explained by the gravity of the sun on Uranus. Okay? So let's say its path is something like this. And then they say, you know what? Just, if it was just the sun on Uranus, its path should have been slightly off. You know? Something like that, let's say. <coughs> and if it's Jupiter... Jupiter will also have an effect of Uranus. Uh, so they say if it's Jupiter and Sun and the other inner planets, the path.